Sing the symphony My heart beats when it could not sing a P One G play some keys to sing for me I get hooked to the chorus guaranteed uh, I'm a tempo tempo Music takes you to the place it came from Instrumentals in your mental echoes In your subconscious it sits and set those Welcome to Bible Talks, Fridays of a Bible Talks. I hope you brought your shouting clothes tonight. I'm so excited to be here every Friday to share the word of God with you. It's such a privilege. I would like to thank each and every one of you that uh, has given me this opportunity to reach you, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know everyone is busy these days. For me to be able to speak to you, for you to be able to spare However many minutes we'll be here for, I will not take too much of your time uh, to listen to me. I value time. I think time is precious. If you give me your time, then I respect you. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to know that there are people out there that are willing to listen to what I have to say. And uh, as long as you're here today giving me your time, know that you are a giver. Remember, Jesus says, Give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. But Jesus was not specific about what you should give. Therefore, time is a commodity that you can give as well, and you will receive time from men. They shall give time unto your bosom. You will find yourself in positions where you have enough time to rest, and to do every other activity because you yourself gave your time to the Lord. And each time that you sit down to listen to a preacher preach or teach or share from the word of God, know that you are giving your time to God. So uh, money is not the only thing that we can give to God, but our time is also as valuable because after all, time is money. That's not a biblical statement, but it's, it's, a, it's a worldly statement. Time is money. So we're continuing with the Personality of God series. We are doing part four today. We just concluded uh, looking at an aspect of God's personality. God is strong. So remember the first part of this series was God is the source. And then we moved on to God is strong. And we did part two of God is strong, which was last week Friday and today we're beginning a new um, segment within this series of the personality of God which is God is light now it's important for you to understand very important for you to understand that the scriptures talk about light in so many portions uh, to the extent that the Bible describes God as light Jesus Christ himself 
not only described us as the light of the world, but he described himself as light. And the Bible says he was the light that came into the world, that shines every man that came into the world. Remember, uh, John chapter 1 talks about John the Baptist, uh, how that he was not that light, but he came to bear witness to the light, the one true light that gives light to every man that comes into the world, uh, Jesus Christ. So light is a very important subject in the scriptures for you to be able to understand uh, what light is, what benefit light is of to you, and to also understand just generally why we are called the children of light. The Bible calls God the father of lights. We are called the children of light. So light is a very important statement throughout the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the first three verses of the Bible, which I'm going to read to you shortly, not only mention light, but they also show us that light is a key element within the Godhead because the first three scriptures of the Bible describe the Godhead. The Godhead is the introduction to the scriptures. And we can give you, I can give you so many uh, examples and so many scenarios and I can explain to you in so many ways how that the Godhead is the first, uh, is the first thing that we see uh, when we get into the scriptures. All right, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light, and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Wow. <laughs> so in the beginning, God, the father, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God, that's verse 2. Uh, so we see the God the Father there appearing. We see God the Holy Spirit appearing. And the Spirit hovered upon the face of the waters. And God said, Jesus Christ is the Word of God, the Son of God. The Word of God became the Son of God. And so when we see God say, that's a manifestation of Christ. And he further on continued his statement to further reveal Christ by saying, let there be light. So the word of God, the spoken word of God, a manifestation of Christ, revealed an even greater manifestation of Christ within that statement. And God said, let there be light. And we know that Christ is light. Wow. So the Godhead is revealed right in the beginning. In the very first three scriptures of the Bible, we see the Godhead revealed and we see light mentioned. Now, when we go further down the same chapter, verse 14, verse 14 tells us, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. So many people might mistake verse uh verse four where god says let there be light and there was light and god saw verse three and four and god saw the light that it was good and he divided the, the light from from the darkness many people might mistake that for the sun and god dividing the light from the darkness as him dividing the day from the night but we can see that god later did that in verse 14 of the of the same chapter, Genesis chapter 1. Now, in order to completely, fully understand and contextualize this scripture, what is God saying when he said, let there be light, and there was light? And God further went on to acknowledge that the light was good. And not only did he acknowledge, he acted upon that acknowledgement by dividing the day, or rather for darkness, from night. And he further called darkness uh night he divided the darkness from the light and he further called darkness night and light day right i want to show you a scripture in the book of ephesians that might give you some insight into what light is in this scripture 
and why God divided the darkness from the light. I'll explain to you, but I think I should show you the scripture first. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 8 to 10. To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery Take note of the word mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Now, there's a reason why the church is described as a mystery. As a matter of fact, if you study eschatology, that's Bible prophecy, you realize that... Um, when you, when you study the end times, rather, you realize that when Gabriel came to Daniel in the, in the book of Daniel and described to him saying, 70 years have been determined upon your people, which is the Jews, uh, he describes what would take place, how Messiah would be cut off, and then he describes the coming of the Antichrist. But there seems to be, uh, between the 69th week and the 70th week, because in the 69th week, Messiah is cut off. But in the 70th week, we see uh, something take place which has not taken place yet, right? We see a whole week of the man of sin, which is the 70th week, which we await, which we famously refer to as the seven years of, of tribulation, three and a half, which would be peaceful, and three and a half, which would be the worst tribulation that the world has ever seen or will ever see. Now, when Gabriel describes it this way, 70 weeks, we like to think of it that way, 70 weeks, which is seven of seven years, right? Each week represents seven years. You can understand this by looking at the story of Jacob, how he worked for uh, Leah, and then the father tells him to work for Rachel's week as well, which was seven years. So weeks in that sense are seven years. So 70 weeks would be 70 uh, weeks of seven years. So now this last seven years is what we are waiting for. But between the 69th week and the 70th week, there is what we know as the church age. And this church age is not mentioned even in Bible prophecy because the church is such a mystery, which is here for a particular purpose to reveal something. And this revelation that the church should bring has been explained in this scripture in Ephesians chapter three from verse eight to 10. The Bible says, those things which were hidden in God, the mystery that was hidden in God has now been revealed by the church to the principalities and powers. Now, when God said, let there be light, God was not referring to the sun. He was referring to the knowledge of God within creation. Notice that when you're born into this world, though you do not understand where you're coming from in the moment that you're born. And many people end up dying past 70 years, not having understood where they came from. They take life just as they found it. We found everyone here. We found all these things here. We're just going to interact with them and one day go. But they never inquire, before I came to earth, where was I? The reason I'm asking you this is because I had a conversation a couple of, uh, a couple of weeks ago where someone asked me, Someone said, there's no proof of God's existence. And I said, if there's no proof of God's existence, then where did you come from? Because when you came into the world, you did not bring anything with you. You found everything you have here. So how are you not curious about where everything else came from? And he said, I came from my father. That's biological. I mean, it's, it's, it's not a hidden fact that I was in my father and I came out from my father, right? And I said, which part of you came from your father? But before I went there, I first asked him, why is it that when someone dies, you usually refer to the corpse as a corpse, as a dead body. You will no longer refer to brother John who has died as brother John is sleeping there. You will say brother John's body. It's because intrinsically, we already know, we know it within ourselves that something has left the body. The body is simply that, a body. Because something has left. So Brother John is no longer Brother John because he has passed away. 
and something has left his body, that is the reason for his passing away. If that thing that has left his body was still in his body, then Brother John's body would still be Brother John. And I further asked him to say, which part of you then came from your father? He acknowledged that, of course, we call it a body because the spirit has left. I got you. Which part of you came from your father? Was it your body, your soul, or your spirit? What exactly did your father multiply? And which part came from God? Yeah, I guess his own existence proved God's existence. Now, you need to understand when you come into this world that there's a part of you that carries information, a part of you that carries knowledge. You will see how little babies, little children already understand the concept of ownership. They understand this is my mother. They know I came from this. this they know where to feel safe and where not to feel safe. Little babies have knowledge within them. As they begin to grow this knowledge, there are things that we were never taught. We just knew how to do somehow. This is because there is inbuilt knowledge within us. But where did this knowledge come from? That's light. When God says, let there be light, he is giving information to creation. The sun once knew that it should rise from the east and set from the west. But we, we dealt with this. I believe in God is the source or in God is strong. We, we dealt with the pre-Adamic world and how that God withheld the sun. And we know that when God was creating in Genesis, he was simply reassembling creation and not creating from scratch because we are not told of when God actually created the material, the sand, the dust, the material called earth. We're not told of that process. The earth was already there. It was simply formless and void. So we know that God is reassembling. He is not creating from scratch. Now, when God says, let there be light, he's speaking information into systems softwares, operating systems. So the sun now knows I need to now start rising from the west or from the east and set in the west or whatever the, the directions are. And the sea now knows, okay, this is my boundary, so I need to confine myself. Remember, I, I read you a, a scripture from the book of Job that talks about how the sea, the sea has doors that shut it and comes out from a womb, right? We read that right here. Now, when God says, let there be light, he's giving information. But what God does is he does not give this particular light, this particular information to all of creation. He channels this light to a specific location, earth, and it's heaven. And when God instructs earth to have light, the rest is for him to instruct it. Okay, okay bring forth uh, the, the rest is for him to instruct the earth directly. Okay, bring forth trees, bring forth grass, bring forth animals, bring forth this and that. Why is God speaking to earth to bring forth? It's because earth now has light. Earth now has information. But God separated the day from the night, the light from the darkness, because not every creature was given the privilege of carrying this light, this information of God, this connectivity to God, the instruction within ourselves that comes from God. Remember the Bible in the book of Ephesians says, it is him who works in us both to will and to do. So because this light was only given to us, there are principalities and powers that had fallen before that were deprived of this light Therefore, being known as the kingdom of darkness, God separated light from day. He finally instituted what we know as the kingdom of darkness by leaving them out of the light of God. And this is why the gospel, no matter how you preached it to a demon, would forever be a mystery. Because there is a particular light that they do not carry. This is why prophecy can be so clear about how it will end. Yet the enemy is still carrying on with his plan. No change is made there. The plan is still as it is. Because no matter how much information you give, there is information that cannot get into them because they lack 
that light. That's why the Bible in the book of Ephesians tells us that the mystery is to be revealed to them by the church because the church is the light of the world. The church is the one that is currently the custodian of this information that once was given to the earth. The church now has this information. We now carry that light. That's why Jesus said, you can speak to a mountain to tell it to throw itself into the sea. Why? You carry light within you. That light is information. And that information is the information of God within everything he's created. I would rather, I would, I would like to go further into explaining to you just a bit deeper what this information looks like, what this information is called. But I, I don't want to confuse you. So, you know, I, I believe a revelation should never remain a mystery. You shouldn't leave here feeling confused after I've explained or I've explained to you. So I'll, after I've explained or I've explained to you, so I'll leave it there for now. We carry information. The principalities don't. And they strive to gain that information, though they cannot. Now let me read you another scripture from the book of Psalm. Psalms, Psalm chapter 119, verse 130. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Do you notice how light and understanding seem to be marrying there? The entrance of your words give what? Light. And they give understanding to the simple. So God's word is light. And God said, let there be light. We see God's word transforming into a different form, a greater manifestation of Christ. And God said, that's Christ already, his words, let there be light. And we see the manifestation of this information. The Bible says in Christ dwells all riches of knowledge and wisdom. That's in the book of Colossians. In Christ dwell all riches of wisdom and knowledge. Everything that is known or that will be known, knowledge, it all resides within Christ. Christ is the hub of all wisdom and knowledge. When God wants to tap into his wisdom and knowledge reserves, he looks at Christ. Because in Christ are all those deposits. This is why I'm telling you, when God said, that's a manifestation of Christ. Let there be light. That's another manifestation of Christ. Remember that the word of God has the ability to become. The word became flesh. So we can see the word become light. Again, I would like to explain it a bit further, but I'll, I'll not go further because we'll explain, we'll have a part two of God is light where I will go further in explaining to you just what role Christ has to play in this in this light. Let me read you the last scripture, first John chapter one, verse five to seven. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Do you see that? God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So God himself, when he gives out light, he's giving out a portion of himself. There is information. You see, we talked about God being the source. There is information within God. All of us having come from God, if we got back into God, we are complete. Because God carries the information. He's the source. Now, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. You cannot find any lack within God. There is no blemish, no spot. God is pure light. He is the original copy of all things. Everything you have ever seen or known or heard of, even those things that have not come into your mind yet, God himself is the original copy. There's a part within God that they resemble. So when God says, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, it means man's image should reflect God's likeness. 
there is a part in God that looks like man. Therefore, all things carry some form of resemblance with a part of God, the part they came from. So, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we are walking in the light, it's specified the light. And this is where I'll start from next week. God is light, but what is the light? So next week we'll differentiate God being light, Christ being the light, and heaven being light. So we're going to talk about three dimensions of light. There's the light of God, the light of Christ, and the light of heaven. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Once again, I'm so grateful to have you here. If you have any questions, please please do leave them in the comment section. I'm excited to see your engagement on all our content, whether it's a like, a view, a share, a comment. So delighted. Thank you so much and see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.